Why, hello there. I am Miss Louisa, children's librarian, La Brucalouse, and sometimes Queen Bee of the Seattle P Public Library. I'm here to introduce you to the 2021 Global Reading Challenge, and I am so excited to tell you about it. I know that a lot of you already know what the Global Reading Challenge is, especially my super bright fifth graders. You probably could tell me all about it, but just so we're all on the same page, haha, <laughs> library humor, I'm gonna go into a little bit of detail to explain it to everybody. First of all, Seattle, uh, Global Reading Challenge is a, a program by Seattle Public Library, kind of the best program, in partnership with Seattle Public Schools. In the program, we expect you to read all different kinds of books about all different kinds of kids all around the world. So, the deets. You read those books within your team and you become super, super duper experts. You listen to your librarian and you answer those questions in a team huddle. Each team then submits their questions to more librarian judges. There are a lot of librarian judges who then mark them correct or incorrect. After each question, the judge then tells you what the correct answer is, because we want you to have that information. And then at the very end of the challenge, you guessed it, the team with the most correct answers wins the challenge. Get it, got it good? Okay. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the books. Cece and her parents have just moved to Seattle. Before, they lived in Taiwan, where Cece loved hanging out with her grandma and learning how to cook. But here in Seattle, Cece really misses her grandma and wishes that she could come visit. So, when Cece hears about a kid's cooking contest with a thousand dollar cash prize for the winner, Cece is in it to win it so that she can buy a plane ticket for her grandma. But what should she cook? Cheese puffs? Pasta? A chocolate almond cake? A dish from Taiwan? This fun and colorful graphic novel will appeal to readers who love food, cooking, and grandmas. Measuring Up by Lily Lamott and Anne Zhu. Mm, needs more apples. Hi, my name is Erica, and I am super excited to tell you about The Best in It by Molly Pancholi, one of the great books in the Seattle Public Library's Global Reading Challenge this year. Rahul Kapoor has one goal, to become the best at it. The big question is what it is. If he can just become the best at something, all the tough stuff that he's been dealing with will get a lot easier. Like the classmate who keeps bullying him. Like how he thinks he might be gay. Like how he can't stop thinking about whether the front door is locked, even though he just checked it like how his aunties want him to perform something for the huge international bazaar that they're planning. Like how his best friend Chelsea is going with someone else to the school dance. It's a lot. And while these are all part of Rahul's story, I bet some of these things sound familiar to you, your friends, or your family. So when Rahul's grandfather gives him a piece of advice, find one thing that you're really good at and become the best at it. Rahul takes that advice to heart. If he can become the best at something, anything, all the rest will just melt away. So he tries to become the best at a few different things. And he discovers through injury, through makeup fails, and a lot of other challenges that maybe what he's the best at is being himself. Last year for the Global Reading Challenge, we read Finding Langston. And in this story, we meet a cruel classmate named Lyman who torments the gentle main character Langston. Now, we know Lyman is a bully, but 
how'd he get that way? This year's book, Leaving Lyman by Lisa Klein Ransom answers that question as it tells the story of Lyman and the experiences that will shape the person that he will become. Lyman's life has a shaky start. He has a mother who abandoned him and a father in prison. But luckily for him, he finds refuge and a loving home with his grandparents. His grandfather teaches him to play the guitar and together they discover a love of music. But that period of stability ends all too soon. And then Lyman is pulled from the home that he loves and he is thrown into a dark world of abuse and despair. How much can one child endure? And can Lyman find strength and hope in the warm memories from his past? Leaving Lyman by Lisa Klein Ransom. It's a Coretta Scott King honor book and the winner of the Scott O'Dell Award for Historical Fiction. Do you like scary stories? Do you sometimes feel that someone is watching you when nobody's there? Do you believe in ghosts? Well, Spirit Hunters by Ellen Mo has all of it in there. Harper Rain is a Korean-American girl who's recently moved from New York City to Washington, D.C., where she absolutely hates. In the past, Harper has suffered numerous accidents, but has no memories of. Harper's grandmother also lives in Washington, D.C., but her mother has forbidden Harper and her siblings from visiting her for some reason. While exploring her neighborhood on the second day in her new house, Harper meets her new neighbor and friend, Dale Clayton, whose family is from Jamaica. Harper then learns that her new house may be haunted and a child may have died there. Harper then starts to notice her innocent brother, Michael, is starting to act stranger and stranger and then she is suddenly attacked by a toy fire truck. Harper then realizes that ghosts might just be real. And then one has taken over her brother. In desperate need to save her brother from the ghost, Harper's grandmother suddenly comes back into the picture with a secret that shakes Harper's world to the core. Well, will Harper be able to save her brother? Well, read the book to find out. Hello, if you love sports, especially basketball, you will love this new um, Global Ring Challenge book, Epic Athletes uh, with LeBron James. This book is about LeBron James' childhood, growing up in Akron, Ohio with his mother. There were lots of challenges he faced growing up, especially at school and with his friends and classmates. He gained a lot of skills to help him work well with his team and his path to work with the NBA. This book goes through many of the basketball games throughout his high school years. So you feel like you're watching uh, the game as well. Got lots of support from his coaches, friends, families, and mentors throughout his childhood. And he gained strength and knowledge along the way. I hope you enjoy this book. Let me tell you about Kitu, a fourth grader in an orphanage in Kenya. He's a great kid, just like you. He loves reading and has a vivid imagination. His best friend is named Nagosi. He is a hardworking student and his favorite food is Pilau. Our story really starts in chapter two when three shocking things happen to Kitu. So he's in the library one day and then he sees this box of books. Mrs. Kiafa, that's the librarian's name. Mrs. Kiafa says she's getting rid of those books because they're too damaged to be on the shelves. Don't librarians want books in their libraries? That's shock number one. Okay, then Mrs. Kiafa says he can look in the box and keep one or two books. Kitu can't believe that she's gonna let him keep and take one, you know, because he's used to checking them out and bringing them back to the library. That's just what you do. So that is shock number two. Okay, so now he's looking through the box and he sees that, yeah, some of these books are in really bad condition. However, he does see one book that looks promising. It's called Sports Around the World. And this is when you see something completely unexpected. There's a picture of athletes wearing heavy looking clothing and big boots with metal blades on them. And they're standing on this weird kind of white surface. Remember how I said that Kitu lives in Kenya? 
Kenya is in Africa. It's close to Ethiopia and Somalia. And the weather in Kenya is hot. It doesn't snow there. Anyway, Mrs. Kiaka tells Kichu that these athletes are ice hockey players in Canada and that ice is frozen water. Kitu has never seen ice hockey and he's never seen ice before. So that is shock number three. So Kitu decides he wants to learn how to skate and one day play ice hockey. So if you like stories about kids trying hard to make their dreams come true, and if you were wondering what happens to Kitu, well, you absolutely have to read this book, Hockey Night in Kenya by Danson Mutinda and Eric Walters. Set in modern day Seattle, I Can Make This Promise is about a 12 year old girl named Edie who has always been told she looks like she comes from someplace exotic. Uh, Edie has always known that her Native American, Suquamish Duwamish mother was adopted and had been raised by a white family. So even though she is curious about her family history, Edie assumes that there is no way to find out more information. Then one day, she searches the attic while working on a film project for school with her two best friends and they find a box. Inside there are photographs of a woman who could be her twin. Even stranger, this woman shares her first name, Edith. But this can't possibly be a relative since her mom was adopted as a baby. She has no connection to her birth family. So who is Edith? Why is her story in Edie's attic? Why do they share a name? In this book, inspired by her own family's history, Christine Day tells the story of a girl who uncovers her family's secrets and discovers her own Native American identity. Hi everyone, my name is Jared Rosello and I am the creator of the graphic novel Red Panda and Moon Bear. Uh, Red Panda and Moon Bear is about these two Cuban American siblings who have these super powered hoodies and they use their magic and their powers and cool inventions and magical artifacts to help keep their neighborhoods safe from monsters and strange mysteries and paranormal or supernatural happenings. Just like Red Panda and Moon Bear, I'm also Cuban American. I was born and raised in Miami, Florida. Um, and growing up in a place between two different languages and two different cultures and two different histories gave me a sense uh, that the world was full of possibility and that there was always something a little bit magical and mysterious about it. Um, and growing up that way inspired this book. I was curious, what if I took that magic and that mystery and put it into a book where the magic and the mystery took the form of monsters and strange things going on around me. And so Red Panda and Moon Bear have these two super powered hoodies that they believe give them power of Red Panda and the Moon Bear. Um, they have a magical crystal that Moon Bear holds in his gauntlet that Red Panda built for him. And Red Panda builds a whole bunch of cool and crazy machines and inventions and weapons to help keep their neighborhood safe. Um, so this book is full of monsters like mutated ice cream cones and nightmare monsters. Uh, there's strange paranormal happenings where buildings go missing and aliens invade town. Um, and it's up to Red Panda and Moon Bear and all of their friends in town to help keep the town safe um, and restore some order and to have a little bit of fun in the process. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the book. Bye. Those were so fun. Thanks for sharing, friends. Have a great global reading season, and I'll see you soon.